Well, hey guys, it is Saturday, September 9th, about, uh, oh, maybe about two o'clock in the afternoon, and I wanted to tell you guys uh, what's going on with old Bob. I wanted to give you all an update. Okay, so let's have a little little conversation here. Yeah, I know it's it's kind of one-sided, but <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to bring you guys up to date as to what's going on with old Bob. So, starting uh, this coming Monday, the, the build begins. Uh, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, the build begins. Everything is, is a go. On Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week, it goes on the dyno, okay? Because uh, Chad, Chad Golan, who is, that's who I'm purchasing the engine from, is, is uh, Golan Engines. Golan Engine Service is the name of the company. And guys, I highly recommend them. Um, they just they just make an awesome product, and that's why this is going to be the second engine I've ever bought from Chad Golan. So figure on about uh, Tuesday or Wednesday the engine goes on the dyno. Oh, and by the way, Chad will be producing a video of the engine on the dyno. So as soon as he has that up on his site, um, I'll give you guys a link so you can head on over there and take um, take a look at it as uh, Chad does a couple of pulls, okay, with it on the dyno. So yeah, I will put that, I'll make a link for that as soon as it becomes available. And then by Friday of next week, the engine will ship out. Now, it has to come all the way from New Hampshire because that's where he's located. So a truck from New Hampshire all the way to Arizona, that could take a little time. So the actual install of the engine and transmission isn't going to incur occur until after the 15th of September. So, you know, that following week. So hopefully that following week by Friday, the, insta uh, the installation will be completely done and I will have Bob back, okay? Cross my fingers, because guys, I tell you what, not having Bob, I feel like I'm caged. I'll be, I'll be quite honest with you. He's such a huge part of my life. I mean, everything that I do, all the places that I go, the mines that I explore, the things that I see, you, pull, you take Bob out of the equation, my gosh, everything just comes to a screeching halt and you end up inside of a stinky rental car. So I can't wait to get him back because I want to start producing new content for you guys just as soon as possible. But I want you all to know that um, I've got to go back down to Arizona come October 1st. So it's like there ain't going to be a whole heck of a lot of time to try to produce fresh content between the week after the 15th and October 1st when I got to pack everything up and head back to Arizona. So it's just total crunch time. I hope you, I know you guys, you guys understand. I mean, um, I really want to get out there and produce fresh content for you, but uh, it's, it, it, it's just one of those things. September just turned out the way that it is, um, but I'm not giving up because uh, Laura and I have big plans for the channel, and I'm going to tell you all about that here in just a second. But first, let's get back to old Bob. So with all of that going down, uh, the engine being built, okay, the transmission is done. Uh, I had it rebuilt by a really good outfit in Arizona that that, that just specialize in rebuilding transmissions. I, I can't give the name to you guys right now because i got to get permission to do all that. You know how it works. Um but I highly recommend them. And guys, I want you to know, I, I want you to know what I went through. I, I almost got taken by scammers. So many weeks ago, I was, I, I was on the internet looking for a brand new transmission. And I could not believe the amount of scammers out there scamming people with transmissions. It's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, you call one of these places and you get redirected to a call center or you get redirect, or, or or the business name says that they're located in Florida or they're located in Ohio, but you get a redirect to some guy working the phones in California, okay? And then what he does is he says we need the core deposit up front first, so you're going to need to send us fifteen hundred dollars long before we ever send you the transmission. I tell you what, it's a darn good thing that I'm internet savvy because. I can't even imagine how many desperate people in the world that these people that, that are being taken, you know, their good money taken by these scam artists 
selling transmissions. It's absolutely crazy. And that's why I was so happy when I finally found a, uh, a hot rod shop uh, down in Arizona where I could have a person, one single individual. You know, you work on the phone with the man. He's he, Not only is he the owner of the company, okay, but he's the one building your transmission, okay? It's that kind of relationship. Not some kooky call center here, there, or everywhere trying to sell you a four or $5,000 transmission with an upfront $1,500 core deposit. Are you kidding me? Unreal. So anyways, uh, all the parts are in too. Of course, when you put in a brand, brand new engine, um, the uh, uh, you're going to need some extra things. You know, like you, you never mate a new engine with a transmission without putting in a, a brand new flex plate. You don't do it, okay? You just don't do it, especially when you're when the previous f flex plate is over 250,000 miles. And there's a lot of other little things that you that you replace when you do a build such as this. So all of that's in my mechanic's possession now. He's got a great big pile there. He's just waiting for a motor. Um, what else was it? What I, what I wanted to talk about? Okay, so that's what's going on with Bob now. A few of you down in the comments section, you're like, uh, how come you didn't, how come, Gly, how come you just didn't rent a Jeep? You know, go to a, some rental place and rent a Jeep. Well, here's why. Number one, renting a Jeep from a, from a rental place, like say Budget or Avis or Enterprise or any one of those places, okay, right now is averaging at around $1,200 a week. That's right. Rental car prices have gone sky high. Then when you get that Jeep, it's going to have highway tires on it, okay? <laughs> highway tires. Basically, a rental Jeep is a pavement princess. That's what they are. So you get a rental Jeep with highway tires, and then you either have to use your own in insurance, uh, or you have to buy insurance, which is another 30 or $40 per day on top of your rental fee if you buy insurance from the rental company, okay? Then you go out into the hills with this pavement princess and you try to get to a mine and you, you know, rub it up against a tree, up against a bush, you know, maybe a brand, whatever the case may be. And you leave a little bit of prairie, what I call prairie pinstriping down the side of your pavement princess. Well, there's a tongue twister. Okay. Well, what do you think is going to happen when you return that Jeep back into the rental place? They're going to, the guy with the clipboard is going to be like, Da, 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 and well, y'all couldn't y'all know what's going to happen after that. So that's why I didn't go out and rent a Jeep. Okay. Uh, what was the other thing now? Oh, about the engine. Some of you down in the comments section were like, well, all you really needed to do was just uh, sleeve the cylinders, <laughs> put in new pistons, rods, and bearings, and call it a day. No. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't think that through. Think about that for a second, okay? So you're going to pull the head off of a Jeep 4.0 engine, set it aside. Okay, pull the head. Now you're you're paying for this. Okay, you got to pay labor for some guy to do this because I can't do it. And I mean, I'm I'm a mechanic. I could certainly do it, but I can't no more because I run around in an RV and I explore abandoned mines, right? So uh, my 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 tool capacity is limited, unlike what it used to be back in the 80s and 90s. So you got to pay a guy to pull the head off, okay? Then you got to then you got to bore the cylinders so that you can add a sleeve and of course then you got to hone them out. Then you got to add a new piston, new rods, new bearings, and now you're going to put these bearings on a crankshaft where the journals haven't been you know, polished. So you're, so you're putting brand new rod bearings on old crankshaft journals. Then you're going to do all this, this entire process of sleeving the cylinders, new pistons, rods, and bearings, and you're going to put it in an engine with that has 200 and over 250,000 miles on it. That means 250,000 mile uh, cam camshaft, camshaft bearing, timing chain, uh, lifters, push rods, valves, springs, retainers. Can I, should I keep going? So it's a ba okay. I'm having I'm having you can tell I'm having fun with this. <laughs> it's a band-aid fix. You're not going to spend um say what 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 would it cost? 2 3000 dollars to do something like that. 
when you could just spend a few thousand do dollars more and buy a whole brand new engine, okay, where everything is brand new and everything is breaking in at the exact same time, okay? Now, I understand why you guys would make a comment like that. Don't get me wrong, you older fellers. Back in the day, that's what we did. We were shade tree mechanics, and we fixed... We did what we had to do to get our vehicles up and running again, okay? I'm old school. I know what you're, I know what you're talking about. So, uh, but these days, uh, no, that wouldn't be feasible. You wouldn't want to do something like that because especially uh, for somebody like me, reliability is of the utmost importance. And I mean the utmost importance. importance. Your vehicle has to be incredibly reliable to drive out all the way 30, 60 miles out into the middle of nowhere to find to find an abandoned mine high up in some mountain range. And if you break down out there, you know what the tow bill is going to be for something like that? Okay. First of all, they got to they gotta send a Jeep out there to pull you onto uh, a road where you could be recovered by a flatbed. So you're talking something similar to like what you see on Matt's Towing and Recovery, you know, his YouTube channel. Only, only what they would do is they would snap strap your butt from the mountain all the way down to a hard top. Then they would put your vehicle on a flatbed and tow you to the shop. You, you're, I mean, you wouldn't believe what the tow bills were that I had to absorb just towing from south of Caliente down to Vegas much less towing somebody from the middle of nowhere. That would be absolutely, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars to do something like that. So you, it is, it is imperative. It is absolutely imperative to have a vehicle with the utmost reliability when you're doing what I do, going to these places out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, as far as mechanical wise, we're all done with talking about that. Now let's talk about Laura. That's right. Uh, my favorite gal. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let me tell you what's going on with Laura. So I know you all want her back and she is going to be coming back, guys. I promise you that. But Laura has to finish out her contract with her current employer and that contract extends out until next spring. Okay. So in the meantime, this fall, yeah, I got a runny nose here. Ugh. In the meantime, this fall, and winter, uh, whenever she gets some days off, she's going to meet up with me down in Arizona, and then we're going to go do Explorers together. So it'll be kind of like, um, I'll, I'll be solo, and then there'll be a Laura Explorer, and then maybe a couple of solos, and then a Laura Explorer. And we're going to do that all throughout the, uh, the this fall and this winter. And it's going to be so much darn fun. I'm telling you, guys, her and I have got so many awesome ideas. Um, and that's and, and that's what I needed. You know, uh, I needed somebody like her that has as much enthusiasm for abandoned mines uh, and mining history as I do. Because when you take two people like that and put your heads together, you can come up with some pretty amazing ideas. Okay? Now... I feel as though I've accomplished a lot in the last four going on five years of the channel. But I know I can accomplish more. I know I, I know that there's a few more high bars that I can reach, both in the exploring aspect of the channel, the uh, production value of the channel, um, and things of that nature. And those are the kinds of things that Laura and I have been talking about on, on the direction that we can take things. And we're really really super excited about it and then come next next spring and summer uh that's when her and i will be uh out exploring full time okay kind of like what uh tom and julie does or frank and sharon okay her and i are going to be out doing that together all the time and i'm really looking forward to that guys i just want you to know she is such an awesome person i mean just an absolute blessing to find somebody that not only is interested in all of the things that uh, I'm interested in, but to find someone, you, you know, you know what it's like. You've, you guys have all in your lives played the dating game, been married, divorced, and so on and so forth. You know what it's like. You try to find somebody with as much compatibility as possible. Well, I'm telling you, the compatibility between Laura and I is just absolutely through the roof. I'm, I've never. I've never experienced any, anything quite like it. 
without getting too far into my personal life, um, I've endured a life of a whole lot of compromise and capitulation, let me tell you. And it's doable, but it can be really frustrating. But when you finally find yourself in a position where, uh, like, 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 like what Laura and I have, that's really, really something special. And I can't wait to just um, spend more time with her, do more fun things. I mean, uh, uh, you know, rope into more mines. That, that's the other thing I want to start doing is you all know that mines in the United States, it's hard to find artifacts unless you go deeper, unless you do more rope work, things of that nature. Well, I can't be doing that kind of stuff when I'm solo. I did a little bit of it with Mr. M and the schnozzelator, but <laughs> the schnozzelator. You know how much money I put into that thing and did it grow the channel? Not at all. Did more people watch? Not at all. It was kind of crazy. I thought that that would be a really cool thing to schnozzle later, but it was a big giant. Wah, wah, wah. But that's okay. These are the these are the things that you do when you are a YouTuber. You try different things. You bob you bob and weave your way throughout um, uh, the different aspects of the channel. You listen to your subscribers. I always listen to you guys. I. I do my best to try to, to try and read every comment that comes through the channel. Now it's it's in it's in the hundreds, sometimes the thousands per week. But I do my best, and I pull that information in to try to steer the tra channel in in new, different, and exciting ways. Because I've told you guys this a long time ago, I don't want the channel to become cookie cutter. Okay. I want to always keep you guys off guard where you just don't quite know what I'm going to be doing from week to week, okay? Because it's one thing to just turn a camera on and run through haulage edits and drifts all day long. We've seen it a thousand times. You can go anywhere on YouTube and see dozens and dozens and dozens of videos of, of uh, folks doing just that, okay? But I try to put a little twist on it. I try to keep it a little bit more exciting. And I know you all love my... Wonderful personality. <laughs> um, you know, I, hey, I'm having fun. You guys are having fun watching me, and I'm having a lot of fun bringing it to you. And just as, it, imagine, you know, just as if you were like right there with me, I would be joking around with you, you know, yucking, doing the yucks, and, and telling jokes, and just like what I do on the channel, you know. So if you were actually there, it would be the same way. I like to have that kind of involvement with my audience, okay? And that's why you guys subscribe to the channel, because um, I want things to feel friendly. I want things to feel fun for the channel. And uh, and I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. Believe it or not, we're coming in on five years for the channel. And believe it or not, guys, I'm just getting started. I've got ideas up here that... Uh, I wish I could just like rip them out of my head and, and kind of form it into a snowball and, and just throw it right at you. You'd be like, whoa, that, that's pretty darn cool, Gly. I know, I know, and I really want to do it, but it involves money, okay? It does. Speaking of that, real quick. See, I told, I told you we're going to have a conversation today. Speaking of the money, it is absolutely crazy what people think about YouTubers and how much money they make. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about Mr. Beast or the guys that have umpteen millions of not million subscribers. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the lowly YouTuber such as myself that has less than, less than 200,000 subscribers. And there's a lot of us out there, okay? But if you go on Google and you type in abandoned and forgotten places ad revenue or how much abandoned and forgotten... I, I always get such a laugh, a, such a chuckle out of those reports that anybody can Google. It's crazy. If I Let me tell you, I wish, I wish the channel made that kind of money because if it did, we would, Laura and I would be doing things like making plans to go to Alaska and explore mines. Or let's head on over to Europe and explore the catacombs for crying out loud or maybe the basements of some old castles. Whatever the case may be, it's it's just absolutely ridiculous what 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 some folks seem to think that YouTubers make on my level for ad revenue. Now you guys have noticed when you come on my channel, you don't ever see stuff like uh, 
like uh, promos or ad insertions like play this video game you know you guys have all seen those where where the youtuber breaks for 30 seconds to a minute and he talks about shaving products or video game phony baloney or what whatever or or or, or uh, network what is it internet access whatever it starts with a v i don't know all that you don't ever see that in my channel because i just don't do it i want it i i want i want to keep the channel about mine exploring period yes youtube puts ads on my videos i don't have any control over that okay you turn on monetization youtube puts ads on there now depending on how you're accessing the video whether you're doing it through um if you have a google account or if you don't have a google account or depending on your browser that's all going to play in the determination as to how many how many ads you get on one of my videos i've got no control over any of that stuff i make the videos I put it on their platform, they throw ads on it so that uh, they can make money and I can make a little bit of money. That's it. That's, that's all there is to it. Now, someday, and I will say this, now someday in the future, uh, now that I've got Laura helping me out and she can help out with these things, if I find a product that I truly want to endorse, like I would you know, actually be using this, this product when mine exploring and if it's good enough and if it's if i really think that yeah you guys really need to have this because i use it all the time and if i use it all the time you should have it too then i will endorse that product okay and you might start to see that within the next year or two we'll just see how things play out i don't know i'm just throwing this out there letting you guys know what's going on all right guys so that's what i wanted to do i just wanted to sit and sit in this uh stinky rental car have a nice conversation with you uh let you know what's going on where things are going you know that sort of thing and uh yeah so i can't really think any any more to talk about so i'm gonna get on out of here um Probably have to stay by the phones come Monday, uh, just in case Chad needs to call me with anything regarding the engine. I'm going to try to get out. There's a place, i got to drive to it. There's a place south of Ely, Nevada, that's called the Charcoal Ovens. I've always wanted to see that, and if I can get over there, that I think that would be a really cool place to use the drone. Um on my DJI Avada drone, I bought an attachment that can carry a, what's called a loom cube on top of it, okay? So I'm going to screw that on there, turn the loom, loom cube on, and I'm going to head on out to charcoal ovens and see if I can fly uh, into the openings of those charcoal ovens with that illumination going and, and fly in and out and see how that would work. And if that works really good, that could be something that I could use for a future episode when we're exploring mill sites, old cabins, things of that nature. That would be kind of neat. So uh, if I can get that done on Monday, Tuesday, um, then I'll have that video out for you uh, next Saturday is, is what, I'm, what I'm shooting for. And finally, guys, for all of you who have watched this video to the very end, I probably should have said this in the very beginning of the video this rock sale that i put up on ebay that began uh this last friday uh, only extends out to um tomorrow monday i could only do it for three days because uh after monday of next actually i should say after tuesday of next week i've got some personal stuff i have to attend to uh and so that's why i need it that's why this sale was short because i have to get the rocks shipped out before i before i head out and do some of these uh personal things that needed that need to be addressed all right okay guys that's it all right enough enough blabber mouthing that's what's going on i always enjoy, enjoy talking with you i wish that all 172,000 of you were standing right here so i could shake your hand look you in the eye pat you on the back have a nice conversation with all of you because that's the kind of guy i am i love chatting with people making new friends um Maybe that's why uh, YouTube works so well for me. I just love what I do, and I love doing it for you. Guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you all again sometime down the road.
Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.